Hey, what's up, folks? Uh, welcome back to On Texas Football, and welcome back to Football Theory. I'm Lifetime Longhorn Rod Babers. Pleased to be joined by the coach, former high school football coach at Bernie Capel, Brownwood, Rotan, Belton, also played college football at Abilene Christian, coach there in multiple stints, also was on the University of Texas football coaching staff for multiple head coaches. It's our coach. These days, you can find his work at ShipleyRanches.com. It's Coach Bob Shipley. What's going on, Coach? How you doing? Hey, what's up, Rod? How you doing, man? Getting uh, <clears throat> Getting great. closer to the game, man. Turkey yeah. in the air. It's going to be turkey for a few days around my house, and I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, how can you not love it? Thanksgiving is probably the greatest holiday. Oh, you're, yeah. you're an adult male. I don't know if there's a better holiday out there. It's all about football, all about family, all right? All about family and football and great food. Can't get better than that. And it's acceptable to take a nap. You can just take a nap whenever you want to. You can fall asleep, Coach, right there in the living room in front of everybody and nobody judges. Matter of fact, people are like, shh, don't wake up, Paul Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember it well. My grandpa, my dad, and my uncle were all, all in a sofa. I got a picture of it. All their heads cocked back, and they're like in dreamland. Oh, man. It's great like, memory. Yeah, it and, is. And you don't have to worry about gifts or anything. You know, no. You're not, you, just, nope. you just come and you just be thankful. And we have – Everybody go around the table and tell one thing that they're thankful for, yep. you know, and it's all good, man. It all it is. It, it's it's actually as I get older, I recognize I love it even more than I used to. Love me some Thanksgiving. All right, uh, we'll talk about the Thanksgiving rivalry, of course. The uh, Texas and Texas A and M Aggies, uh, Texas Longhorns, Texas A and M Aggies rekindling their rivalry. Uh, we'll talk about that and break it down. Got some X factors that we'll get into. But this episode of our football theory brought to you by our friends over at My Bookie. Uh, My Bookie, make sure you're in the game with My Bookie. Play any matchup, hundreds of college player props, and more. Uh, we'll give you more details about my bookie here in just a second. But let me lay out what we're going to talk about today. X factors in this Texas Texas and matchup coach. I think the biggest X factor is probably the health of Quinn. Uh, obviously, and what is the uh, what the, what's the domino effect of the butterfly effect of Quinn's injury? Mild, severe, lingering. We'll get into that. Uh, also, Marcel Reed, the quarterback for AM, he's been providing a spark for them. He is a problem as a dual threat quarterback that can move around and make some plays. We'll talk about him as an X factor, and we'll talk about the most what I think is the most compelling matchup. Um, in terms of the X's and O's, Jimmy's and Joe's, the most compelling matchup between Texas and Texas A&M. So we'll dive into that. But first, let me tell you about my bookie. With all the excitement of this season, make sure you're in the game with my bookie. Bet any matchup, hundreds of college player props and more, and take advantage of weekly risk-free bets. The best part is you can do it all anytime, anywhere, straight from your phone. Visit mybookie.ag and use the promo code on Texas to get started. It's really easy. It's my bookie's 10-year anniversary, and they're rolling out the red carpet for each and every one of you. Bet big. Bet confidently with risk-free Thursdays. If your boosted bet doesn't hit, you'll get your money back. That's right, folks. Weekly no sweat, win-win bets all season long. Uh, with my bookie, you're making money before you even place that first bet. You can sign up with my bookie right now, cash in on that double deposit bonus. All you got to do is use the code on Texas, and you'll get a double deposit bonus. Double the cash in your account before you even place your bet with my bookie. Uh, but don't wait. Do it right now because it's only available for a limited time. And for those of you seasoned bettors with my bookie, who've been betting and winning with MyBookie for years. They have a brand new loyalty rewards program at MyBookie Plus. It's simple. The more you play, the more you earn. And as you progress through the tiers, you'll unlock exclusive promotions, epic giveaways, and cash back in your account. That's MyBookie.ag. Use the code on Texas to get that double deposit bonus and MyBookie Plus for your loyalty rewards program. All right, coach, let's dive right into it. The big uh, topic of conversation, I was listening to some Aggies the other day. Um, everybody's talking about Quinn's ankle. It was, uh, I believe, reported to be a mild ankle sprain. He did practice. He has practiced this uh, this week. But, you know, going into that game, we actually don't know exactly how he's going to look. And that could always be lingering effects or he could re-injure it in the game. I'm sure Coach will have some contingency plans. But going into the game with a quarterback who might be dealing with an injury, the other opposing team knows it. All right. Uh, do you think that Sark is going to do potentially modify the offense in a little bit? We know in big games, he likes to lead with the pass. Real high early game, early down pass rates, as, as high as 70% at times in the early game, early down pass rates. In the Kentucky game, though, they were lower than 60% early game, early down pass rate. They wanted to establish a run. Is it possible, Coach, coming off that Kentucky game, that Texas goes with a higher run rate or at least higher than usual with the Quinn injury and coming off a game where you ran the football really well against Kentucky? I think the opening drive will dictate that personally. I, I think he'll mix it up. 
just see what the running game looks like, see how we're coming off the ball with our offensive line against that great Aggie defensive line. That's going to be the test. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not Kentucky defensive line, you know, it's A&M mm-hmm. defensive line. They're, they're, they're one of the best in college football, really uh, in the yes, top, sir. in the top tier anyway. And so, uh, I, you know, I, I look for for Sark to start fast. He always starts fast. I mean, yep. it just seems like he tries to get the defense on their heels uh, with the opening drive, doing some stuff that, you know, hits them before they know what happened, and then throw some runs in there too. But I, I don't, I don't see the injury as significant. I really don't. Um, but as I've told you, Rod, and I've told Bobby, and I've told everybody, I just got a weird feeling. I just got a weird feeling that somehow Arch is going to come in and save the day at some point. I don't, know it is. I don't know when it is, but I even read some stuff from my Aggie friends that are like, God, we hope, we hope Quinn's not hurt. We don't want to face Arch, you know, we, <laughs> we want to face Quinn. And I'm like, ah, be careful what you wish for. I'm still going to carve them up, you know, <laughs> he carved up plenty of turkeys in his time. And Damn you want right. to turkey, just sit back there and get carved up. <laughs> but I feel like I, I feel like that 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 Sark is not gonna he, he's not gonna get too far away from his game plan. He's gonna stay, and I'm sure he's got a, a little bit different tweak for Arch if Arch has to go in. Yep. If uh, <clears throat> yeah, if Quinn re injures that ankle or or has a problem somehow, I, I you know I, I feel like you just go in and and. Uh, you know, do what you think their defense is giving you. And if Quinn can't do it, then, uh, you know, we go with Arch. But I feel confident that Quinn will be healthy and Quinn will be on his game. This is a career-defining game for Quinn in my mind. Yep. You know, he's been in a roller coaster all season. And as you said so well, that shocked me, but it was so obvious that, you know, we're 12 games in. We are who we are. You know, that your statement has stuck with me. And that is, we, we keep saying, okay, when when is this offense going to arrive? When are we going to evolve? When are we going to be that offense that we dream of of Sark having while he's here? And we know we we are who we are, you know. And 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 Quinn can Quinn has better games. He has not so, but he's been playing good enough for us to win. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And he seemed to be rising to the occasion when he has to. And we'll see how that plays out this week, but I feel like that uh, the injury is not its not as big a concern, you know, as it was in years past where there was a big drop-off from QB1 to QB2. I totally agree, Coach. And, and I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like either way, if they, let's say worst-case scenario, Quinn does have lingering effects from injury. I'm with you. I don't think it'll be a big deal. Um, and – your hunch is right that you, at one point Arch is going to come in and save the day. We don't know when that is. Could be at any game, could be later. But to back up your point, we talked about it. When was the last, you know, solid six game stretch where we've seen Quinn go without getting injured? Like that's that's rare for him here at Texas. And I believe to win the national title, you want to go on a, a run here. The reason I am bringing up the X factor of Quinn is because I wonder if sorry, because we saw him in that game be stubborn against Kentucky about the run game. Fifteen straight plays running the football. I do wonder. Uh, to ease the burden of Quinn or maybe to protect Quinn a little bit more, or even if Arch comes in the game, protect Arch. If Sark has found maybe something in the running game, we saw 10, we saw there was seven uh, 10 plus yard run plays versus Kentucky. Five of those came on wide zone plays, split wide zone, regular wide zone. We talked about it. Maybe they found something that wide zone. That's something to watch versus AM. So I think Texas might have had their best running game performance. Uh, rushing offense performance versus Kentucky. And on the flip side of that, Coach, the Aggie defense, their rush defense is actually in decline. I actually went and did some – look at their last two SEC games against um, Lenora Sellers in um, South Carolina and also uh, against Auburn uh, with Peyton Thorne. Man, if you go look at their yards, uh, rushing yards allowed, overall I think they allow around 128 rushing yards on the season. But in the last three games, last three weeks, I should say, you're talking about them allowing 190 plus rushing yards. Uh, you go look at the yards per rush allowed. They were at they're at 3.8 on the season. But the last three weeks, that number jumps to 4.7. In the last th- three weeks, the last two SEC games, I should say specifically, they have uh, Megney State in there somewhere. The Aggie rush defense seems to be declining. It seems to be 
right now struggling a little bit. And I wonder if Texas, with their running game playing really well, if they can find some things to exploit. Uh, exactly. But you're right. That, that Aggie front, it's loaded. I mean, they got that's where their best players are. Shamar Turner, Shamar Stewart, Nick Skirlton, um, they're tech, the Aggies' best players are on that defensive front, particularly on that defensive line. Torrey York's a good player. So for Texas to travel with that running game, that'd be quite a tall task to travel with that kind of running game. Yeah, well, I, I've got an answer to that. Give it to me. And it comes from the big, great, one of the greatest coaches of all time, Vince Lombardi. One of his quotes that I love, and it's so true, and I think even Winston Churchill made – the same type of quote one time in war and it is fatigue makes cowards of us all so i know starting off that game why would you want to run straight into that buzzsaw defensive front of a m no mm. you make those suckers run sideline to sideline for a few times you know chasing down some short some high percentage passes you know yeah. you don't want to run right at them when they're all you know the, you know, you got a hundred and something thousand people in there, you know, right. for the Aggies, you know, yeah, they're going to be chewing up nails and spitting them out, you know, get those big boys running sideline to sideline a few times, trying to chase down some of our fast receivers. And then, and then let's run the ball a little bit, you know, and yeah, see which team is in the best shape. That's a great point, Coach. Now you, now you said it. I think about it. Michigan, right? Loaded with NFL talent, especially on the defensive front. Bama, loaded with NFL talent, especially on the defensive front. And Sark came out and did exactly what you just talked about in both of those games. Made them chase Texas, all right? Sideline to sideline. Make them uh, catch up to Texas in the passing game. And then they close with the run game, as you just pointed out, once the fatigue hit. That is the formula if Texas can work it out that way. All right, uh, moving on to the next X Factor, Marcel Reed, coach, the young quarterback for a &M. He is dynamic. And what I worry about with this young man, not only you got to worry about the zone read and the read option because he's a true dual-threat quarterback, but when he scrambles, when the play breaks down, he is especially dangerous. You're talking about a guy that's averaging over, uh, over seven and a half yards per scramble. Whenever he decides to scramble, he's got nine first downs. He's got 10, uh, 10, he's got eight, excuse me, eight, 10 plus yard plays on scrambles. And if you go look at where he likes to run the football the most, it's outside the edges. Coach, you're talking about the C and the D gap. He's averaging over seven yards per pop, actually almost seven yards per pop, 6.8, running out of the D gap outside that tight end. To me, I haven't seen Texas be exploited by a dual threat quarterback who we know is a dual threat quarterback. Dylan Gabriel surprised everybody, but that was a tendency breaker. Highest yards per attempt, highest, uh, sorry, highest uh, rush attempts and rushing yardage total for him as a quarterback in his career. So, yes, they got the better of Texas. But most of the time, Taylor Green, um, you know, when you're talking about Jalen Milrow, they don't surprise Texas with a dual threat quarterback. And I don't think Marcel Reed will either. I'm outside. Of you. <laughs> you hear that Blue Jay? I do. Blue hey. Jay over here is oh, trying, trying to get on the show. I'm like that's an Aggie fan. That's an Aggie. That's an Aggie Blue Jay coach. It's yeah, an Aggie. Aggie he doesn't like this discussion. Yeah. Right. Okay, so so there's a couple things about Reed that uh, that I want to bring up. One is his passing at times can be inconsistent. Oh yeah, he he loses his um, fundamentals. And, and just, you know, the basics sometimes, and he throws it uh, in, in awkward places sometimes, mm -hmm. in awkward ways, and his, his throwing motion looks kind of abrupt sometimes. Although he's effective, I, I don't think he's as consistent, uh, thankfully for us, uh, a dual-threat quarterback as, as we've seen, for example, in Vince Young. Vince Young would make you pay big time. I yeah. don't know that. Reed is a guy that, um, you know, I've just we've mentioned this before on on uh, the winning drive. He's he seems to come down pretty easy with a arm tackle. You know, we we talk about you know breaking through tackles because somebody's just reaching out with their arm to try to trip him up. If you can get him off balance, he'll he'll go down a lot of times because he's very he's very uh, light. He's not a heavyweight guy that can kind of swivel his hips and get his feet back yeah. under him. He's a lot of times he's going to go down. And so he doesn't scare me as much as a dual threat quarterback because he's easy to bring down if you can catch him, you know? So yeah. I, I, I feel like that 
that uh, he he's a, he is a good dual threat quarterback. And as soon as I say this, he'll have 150 yards rushing against us. But <laughs> I, I just I just feel like that he's not. Um, he could make a lot of plays in open space, but but when he's in crowded areas and somebody can reach out and trip him up, a lot of times he'll go ahead and go down. And so that's one thing that that works in our favor as opposed to some other dual threat quarterbacks who are a little bit tougher runners. No, I totally agree with you. Uh, I think even Pavi is tougher to bring down than, than him because he's he's a little frail, he's a little slight. That's why they run him on the edges a lot. They don't run him in and they design quarterback runs. They don't run him in between tackles. They run him on the edges a ton um, because of that speed and trying to get him matched up on DBs instead of linebackers and D linemen. One quick thing before we move on to this to the last X Factor. Um, last week versus Kentucky, I will admit that secondary. They gave up more explosive plays, and I've seen them give up in a long time. They've only allowed 21, 20 plus yard passes on the season. The Texas defense has five of those came versus Kentucky, two 40 yard uh, passing uh, plays against Kentucky. They got five 20 plus yard passes, and some of those were extensions uh, basically, a quarterback extending the play, uh, maybe to get outside the pocket, scramble drill. Scramble drill is definitely something that you got to be buttoned up on when you play Marcel Reed and the Aggie wide receiver. So that's going to be something that I'll be watching in that game. I'm sure the Aggies actually uh, took note of that as well, watching that Kentucky matchup. All right, last X factor here, Coach, and you talked about it. The Aggies got some NFL guys on that on that defensive line. Uh, Nick Skirleton, uh Shamar Stewart, Shamar Turner. I mean, these guys are legit. They even got another guy, uh, Cassius Howell, who's actually a really good player for them too. This will be a really good test for the Texas defensive line. They face some really good D-lines. They face Georgia. They face Michigan. So this is not going to be a surprise for Texas. Uh, But that's the strength of the Aggie team. Actually, what I can't wait to watch is the two defensive ends, Shamar Stewart and Nick Scarleton, matched up against Cam Williams and Kelvin Banks. Those are two NFL guys, all right, on both sides of the ball who will be facing off the majority of this game with each other. You can make the argument, Coach, that's where the game will be won and lost because if – Texas, because uh, Texas A&M has 195 pressures on the season. Um, a lot of those coming from Nick Scarleton and Shamar Stewart. I believe Nick Scarleton leads the team in sacks. He's got five and a half. If the Aggies can stop the Texas run game, and that's a lot. We talked about earlier how the Texas run game is finding its form, and Aggies are struggling a little bit with rush defense, but they're better at home. So if they actually stop and can neutralize the Texas running attack, that means Texas is going to be throwing the football a lot, and that's when – Nick Scarleton, Shamar Stewart, and that Aggie D-line can pin their ears back. That's going to be, to me, probably the most compelling matchup to watch. Yeah, it is. And I look for Texas to to throw some screens, especially early, you know, to try to slow down that Aggie pass rush. Because, as we said at the first of the game, with 100,000-plus Aggies screaming Mm -hmm. at the top of their lungs, those guys are going to be coming off the ball like gangbusters, you know. Yep. And so, you know, you you look at screens and draws when you've got an aggressive defensive line. They're they're pumped up, they're fired up, they're wanting to, you know, beat the pass protection. And so, sometimes you can fool them on a draw or a screen to slow them down a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I really think the best thing, as I said earlier, is is throw throw the tunnel screens and things inside outside zone things to make those defensive linemen run and get tired. And then mm-hmm. that will even the playing field a little bit, even though I think our offensive line matches up pretty well with them yep. to give us an advantage. You get those guys tired, you know, you get them tired and you get them rotating their backups in and out. Now it's a different defense. You know, when those starters are out, it, it's not quite the same. And so I'm hoping that Texas will take advantage of that through screens and draws quick passes early from uh, on on the uh, on the exterior of the formation, so that those guys have to run back and forth, sideline to sideline. I mean, it's a simple concept, but I think yep. it's very effective against a team like A and M, especially as emotional as they're going to be, because they're going to be coming off the ball like yeah. Bobby Boucher. Yeah, you're right, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> you know, take advantage of that aggression. Yep, misdirection. I, I think you're around and you hit the nail on the head there, Coach. And before we get out of here, one thing I know is watching film, a lot of twists and stunts, a lot of games they like to play up front, which is why they force a lot of negative plays. They have um, on the season, you go look at their tackles for loss. They got 78 tackles for loss. Uh, that is good. That's a top 20 number. Um, they're top 20 in pressures in the country, top 20 in tackles for loss. A lot of that is because of the twists and stunts they have up front. But as you know, Coach, that can also get you out of position. 
when you have those gap exchanges. And all Texas needs is a little bit of crease, a little bit of daylight at times for the running game to pop. So that's something to watch, too. Yes, those twisting stunts can force negative plays, but also can get you out of position. I wonder if Texas will take advantage of that with some misdirection, with some up-tempo, some of the things that you're talking about there, Coach. All right, uh, there you go. That's the last X factor, the most compelling matchups, the Texas O-line versus that uh, defensive line for the Aggies. All right, before we uh, get out of here, let me thank our sponsor just one more time. Thank you to our friends over at MyBookie. Remember, folks, uh, check out MyBookie. AG. Remember to use the promo code on Texas to get that uh, that double the double deposit bonus. They'll hook you up. It's just that easy. Also, make sure you check out my bookie plus. That's a loyalty rewards program. Um, you can get uh, cash back. You can also get earn all of the uh, promotions. You, know, you can unlock exclusive promotions and tiers and giveaways, all type of really cool stuff at my bookie plus. Remember, use the code on Texas and you'll get that double deposit bonus over at my AG. Coach, thanks for all of the knowledge and the wisdom. Appreciate it. I'm a smarter football theorist as a result of it. Thank you to Matthew behind the scenes. Thank you to mybookie.ag. And thank you to you guys out there for watching and for listening. Beat the Aggies. And until next time, hook them horns.